This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollar. Yesterday, a federal appeals court handed down a ruling that likely sends the question of whether Donald Trump uh, can block the release of documents to the, spe- the, the, the House Select Committee, um, sending it to the Supreme Court. But this, this appellate court has now backs up the thing I've been saying for months and months and months, that a ex-president does not hold executive privilege, does not have the steering wheel in his hand. Certainly, a a current sitting president has the ability to say, yeah, 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 those documents, uh, they fall under executive privilege, and we're going to stand behind that in court. That's not what Joe Biden has done because of the gravity of the situation, the insurrection. Uh, He has sided with the American people. He has sided with the, the safety and the security of our democracy against the forces that would do it in, meaning Donald Trump. I have the ruling here. It is a 60, I don't have all 68 pages because I like trees better than that. But here's a 68 page ruling from the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit. Um, Judge Mellett is the, the, the one who wrote this ruling. And I'm going to read a little bit from it because there are some things in here that need to be heard by many people who are downplaying the the not only the insurrection but also the case that Donald Trump does not have. And she, this, this judge really lays it out here um, and tells the story. So I'm going to read a little bit from this. First, the judge explains, and this is important because I know it's repeating what we know, but this is a court recognizing what took place and the danger of what took place on January 6th. That it wasn't a a trespassing event, as Tucker Carlson likes to categorize it as. It wasn't a happy family reunion, like dumb dumb Michelle Bachman has been trying to say. It wasn't a, a tourist, a bunch of tourists in the Capitol, like members of Congress have said. This is from the judge. On January 6, 2021, a mob professing support for then-President Trump violently attacked the United States Capitol in an effort to prevent a joint session of Congress from certifying the Electoral College votes designating Joseph R. Biden the 46th President of the United States. The rampage left multiple people dead, injured more than 140 people, and inflicted millions of dollars in damage to the Capitol. Then, Vice President Pence, senators, and representatives were all forced to halt their constitutional duties and flee the House and Senate chambers for safety. Again, this is a federal appeals judge. It wasn't a happy family reunion. She is stating facts in a legal document. Now, the pages I'm going to read from are 38 and 39. If you happen to have this particular piece of paper in front of you or you're online reading it, that's where I'm reading from, this part of the ruling. President Biden's careful and cabined assessment that the best interest of the executive branch and the nation warrant disclosing the documents by itself carries immense weight in overcoming the former president's assertion of privilege. To start, as the incumbent, President Biden is the principal holder and keeper of executive privilege, and he speaks authoritatively for the interests of the executive branch. Under our Constitution, we have one president at a time. Article 2 is explicit that the executive power shall be vested in a president of the United States of America. And then she references the U.S. Constitution, Article 2, Section 1, Clause 1, and then another, another, uh, another case that the executive power, all of it, is vested in a president. Also quoting U.S. Constitution, Article 2, Section 1, Clause 1, as between a former and an incumbent president, only the incumbent is charged with performance of the executive duty under the Constitution. One president at a time. That is why executive privilege can't be decided by ex-presidents. And when Joe Biden is longer president and the next lady or the next dude who's the president, they will control it and it won't be Joe Biden. He will have no say 
over what executive privilege gets asserted. Continuing on with the judge's ruling. But by the way, I maybe I buried the lead here. The judge ruled, I think I said it, the judge did rule that Donald Trump's documents need to be released. So it's going to be very likely on to the Supreme Court to decide. Continuing on, to be sure, former President Trump has important insight on the value of preserving the confidentiality of records created during his administration, but it is only President Biden who can make a fully informed and circumspect assessment of all the competing needs and interests of the executive branch. These might include, to name just a few, the current and prospective threats to democratic institutions and the electoral process, intelligence on domestic extremists, the full panoply of competing privilege claims and disputes between the executive branch and Congress, the sensitive status of interbranch relations at multiple levels, and the costs and benefits of a privilege battle or disclosure at the time that the matter arises. The Supreme Court underscored this point when it held in rejecting a claim of executive privilege by another former president that, quote, it must be presumed that the incumbent president, the current president, is vitally concerned with and in the best position to assess the present and future needs of the executive branch and to support invocation of the privilege accordingly. This is Nixon v. Uh, GSA. They give the case there. And then it is the new president, the current president, the sitting president, who has the information and the attendant duty of executing the laws in light of current facts and circumstances, and who has the primary responsibility of deciding when privilege, presidential privilege must be claimed. It is clear, it is crystal clear that Donald Trump does not wield executive privilege. And even if he did, which he does not, it wouldn't apply here. Continuing on. So President Biden's explicit and informed judgment detracts from the weight of former President Trump's views that disclosure in these circumstances impermissibly intrudes into the executive function and needs of the executive branch. Because Donald Trump is an ex-president, he is no longer the steward of the executive branch. He doesn't run it anymore. He doesn't control it anymore. He has no power anymore. He has no interest or standing relative to executive privilege. In addition, the judge writes, President Biden has identified weighty reasons for declining to assert privilege here. He grounded his decision in the unique and extraordinary circumstances of the January 6th attack, an unprecedented effort to obstruct the peaceful transfer of power that threatened not only the safety of Congress and others present at the Capitol, but also the principles of democracy enshrined in our history and our Constitution. President Biden further emphasized Congress's compelling need in service of its legislative functions to understand the circumstances that led to these horrific events. President Biden also tied his decision to the applicable evidence to date, which he concluded establishes a sufficient factual predicate for the select committee's investigation of these presidential papers. Finally, President Biden acknowledged the constitutional protections of executive privilege, but explained that the conduct under investigation extends far beyond typical deliberations concerning the proper discharge of the president's constitutional responsibilities, and the privileges should not be used to shield information that reflects a clear and apparent effort to subvert the Constitution. Clearly written. Again, I'm not, I'm not tooting my own horn, but the same things I've been talking about for months. Finally coming to fruition from the pen of a federal appellate judge. It will likely go to the Supreme Court next, but this is good news. This is one more win in a long war, one battle in a long war to get us toward the truth. The completion of the investigation by the House Select Committee investigating the events of the insurrection, the attempted overthrow of the United States government. 
by overturning a free and fair, settled, certified American election. If this doesn't scare you that we have to go to court to be able to investigate and find out what happened and who planned an attack on our democracy, on our Capitol building, I, I just, it's perplexing to say the least that this is where we are. What do you think though? I'd love to know. You can call, leave me a brief voicemail, 714-576-4054. Of course, you can email me daily at dollamore.com. Thanks for your uh, attention today. I appreciate it. Thanks for your interest in these matters. Thanks for your passion. I get a lot of voicemails of people who are uh, aggrieved and taking this seriously, what is taking place in our country right now, recognizing the, the precarious nature and the existential threat that is posed by the Republican Party at large, but also disparate individuals who possess power. And I've been talking about them and the subpoenas that are being issued to them. And some are uh, bucking them. Some are cooperating. All of it's important, though. Uh, follow me on social media. I'd love to connect with you there. And if I bring you a little value to your day, to your week, uh, from an information standpoint, or, you know, you know, you laugh looking at my dumb face, that's fine, too. Uh, please consider supporting my work here on the platform. For as little as $1.99 a month, you can become a channel member by clicking the join button below the video here, or you can go over to patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast. Both are a fantastic way to support and produce my work. Um, big things are coming. I'm talking about it a little more and a little more and a little more to, to get you ready, but I'm moving to DC and this operation is going to be a whole lot better in the very near future. I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Until I do, be genuine. Take care of one another.